<laughs> what? I don't agree. Because <laughs> there's no happiness in that subject. We asked LSE students for a word that connects these five topics. Happiness, climate, careers, Brexit and apprenticeships. Wow, that's a good question. Um, I think a graduate student. Things that um, LSE students might be worried about. LSE. <laughs> Cosmopolitanism. The entrepreneurship. The current state of the global economy. Is there like a, a correct answer to this? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to give it to you now. Yeah. It's a really good guess. It's very close, but the answer was economics. What? I don't agree. <laughs> oh, God. I could do it again. We spoke to five LSE economists focusing on these themes in their research. One of the key reasons I chose to do economics was because I was interested in how to ensure the economic opportunities for everybody in society. I'm interested in how we can make people and societies happier. I'm hoping to be able to uncover new ways of creating incentives and overcome barriers that contribute to this gender pay gap. My research looks at how and why businesses decide to invest in new technologies which we know are much needed for economic growth. I'm interested in economics of education, as education is a tool to promote uh, equality of opportunities and social mobility. One of the ways in which the economy affects us all is what happens to our everyday products that we deal with in day-to-day -day life. And for example, one of the topics I've worked on is Brexit, and whether we have things like Marmite on our shelves is all determined at the end of the day by what the trading rules something as big as what the trading rules between the UK and the EU would be. I also have recently taken up a policy role, which is to be a member of the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of England. And one of the things we do there is to set interest rates every few weeks for the UK economy. This has repercussions on the daily lives of everybody in the UK, including from decisions like what would be the mortgage rates that we have to pay, what would be the price of food, how much unemployment will there be in the economy, so my research focuses on what makes people choose a particular job and how parents can affect these decisions. So far, I found that children have high chances of choosing a certain occupation if the parents have done it. On average, the correlation is stronger for same-gender parents, meaning that sons tend to follow their fathers and daughters their mothers. And this is true even when parents are not in fields that are gender traditional. I'm particularly interested in this topic because women are usually less likely to go into high-paying and traditionally uh, male-dominated jobs. As an economist, I study data sets that represent large populations to understand what drives individual well-being and how we can use public policies to improve it. And, and, and a part of that is reducing mental illness, which is an enormous source of misery. That is why I study the effectiveness of the NHS Psychological Therapies Program. It helps people with depression and anxiety disorders. The results of my work will help to further improve mental health services. I'm particularly interested in uh, opportunities for those uh, students who may be less enthusiastic about uh, uh, subjects that are typically more academic, such as uh, maths and English, but who are more better at practical skills. And for these students, vocational courses such as good quality apprenticeships might actually provide an educational path that better suits their talent and uh, that uh, allow them to progress with their career. And in fact, working with uh, uh, colleagues, uh, I found that uh, for these students, um, doing an apprenticeship, in, especially in some sectors such as construction and engineering, um, is actually better in terms of um, earnings then do a similar program that is uh, class, classroom based. But the returns do depend on the subject of the apprenticeship. Given the climate crisis, a lot of my recent work is focused on clean technologies, the types of things that we need to invest in in order to get to net zero greenhouse gas emissions. What incentives do businesses need to make the decision to invest in these new technologies? Well, we know that carbon taxes, regulation and standards, R&D support are all important for encouraging that kind of investment. On the invention side, my work has sought to try and identify where there could be growth opportunities. For example, in the UK, we found there are underlying strengths in wind technologies, ocean energy, and also carbon capture usage and storage. Our work has recently been mentioned in a number of key government documents, and this is an example of how economics research can help in the transition to net zero. When you produce evidence that shape policies, you can change the lives of thousands of people for the better. 
And to be able to make those decisions correctly, one needs a really broad understanding of the way the economy works. And this affects all of us our everyday lives. This is very satisfying and it's a lot of fun.